Well, hello, everybody. Here it is, Sunday afternoon. Yes, Sunday afternoon. The last day of our rain fest, which is kind of weird. Rain fest, what are we doing having a rain festival in the middle of February, end of February? Well, because that's when cabin fever sets in. We just figured it'd be a good time to have a bunch of entertainment in the community. Most of it outdoors, so they could all come in and enjoy it, or be outside and enjoy it. And the last day, we have two shows inside tonight with Dana Braithwaite and Chris Whiteley at 7. And this afternoon, our regular guest, at least once a month, if not twice, James Hamilton on sitar. He's got his friend, Mr. Taylor, with him today. We're just going to sit in and do some work together. But again, it's one of those journeys that we find out just where the sitar can go, some of its history, and uh, sit back and enjoy the music that comes with it. Sitar with James Hamilton. Give it up for him, please. <coughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much, John. Um, yeah, today um, we did a show, I think a couple months back, uh, Bob and I. And uh, so we've been uh, we're looking for a time when we could sync up together, and this is it. So <clears throat> I'm going to start off with my usual uh, introduction to uh, some Indian rag, and um, then we'll get into the uh, guitar playing. And uh, towards the end, you know, 45 minutes in or so, then we'll uh, do a little bit of a duet. And if all things work out well, we even might have Lara here doing a dance when I, I'll play some dutar for that. But enough talking. <coughs> well, maybe a little bit more talking and then get into it. Um, I've been working on this rock called Malcolm's, which is... Yeah, it's um, Indian classical rag. It's a major rag, and so usually played in the evening time. And um, it has like a melodic movement like this. So it's in a, there are uh, rogs that are, you know, in terms of the um, tuning and the drones, some are tuned uh, like root fifth, that would be this, um, but this ain't one of those, and the, they're tuned root fourth, and this is one of those. There's a whole group of rogs like that, some of them are quite exotic in their sound, uh, yeah, there's, that was Malcolm, so there's a Chandrakons, which is the same thing with a natural seventh. There's some other rags like Bhagashri, Ragashri, it's like a Bhagashri, uh, Ragashri. So the common point is that the fourth is uh, very strong. It's not that it's the root, but it sometimes to some ears, uh, like Western tuned ears, it sounds like that I'm playing from this as a root when I'm actually playing from here. So um, what I'm going to do, what I've been working on, is a uh, composition I learned in university in India, and I've took it as a basis, and I've added a lot of my own stuff to it. And um, so we're going to start with that to get back into the, the internet world here. So see if we can get the thing going. This is a 10 beat cycle. 
and I'm playing uh, Mishra Malkon, which is, Mishra means it's mixed with other things, but you can feel Malkon's as the uh, underlying uh, thing. I learned this from Timur Boren, who was a uh, Bengali uh, composer who had learned from the same teacher that my teacher learned from, and also from Ustad uh, Aladdin uh, Khan, who was the teacher of Ravi Shankar and uh, Aliyah Khan and those other big names. Anyways, he was our teacher at university, and uh, he taught us this composition, at least the first part, and I added a lot to it. I added actually the intro and uh, the end part. There's a little theme that's his.
Okay, that is a <clears throat> piece by uh, myself and inspired by Timur Boren's. Timur Boren's part was this. Uh, he did the, you know, whatever. And also... That's what I remember from class. <clears throat> and uh, probably because I couldn't remember the rest, I just made it up from the rest of the other parts. So. That's uh, one good thing about Indian music, you don't <coughs> need sheet music because if you just don't remember it, you can just do it yourself. Okay, so <clears throat> my, uh, well, I was going to say that when I did this in the orchestra and uh, I was just recalling this as I was playing, there was, our class was made up of, my immediate class had 25 students and I think there was 21 of them were women and four men and then uh, <coughs> we included, the, all the women were playing sitar. And uh, there was two, myself and one of the guy playing sitar in this group. And then there were <clears throat> some other Indian instruments. And uh, we had this, uh, at the time, quite renowned uh, tabo player named uh, Swapan Chaudhary, who is, uh, he's a sort of legend. But in the, in, back in the day, in ancient history, he was our tabo player at university. And, uh, I mean, he uh, helped everybody stay on beat, let's put it that way. Okay, so I'm going to do another piece. I'm just going to get my rhythmic cycle sorted. <clears throat> okay, this is a piece which I've done before. I won't give too much introduction because you could always check back to the previous videos and I wax lyrical about it. So it's a uh, devotional song called Duke Vandan Teranamji, which means that sorrow ends with your name. Like when people hear your name, all their sorrows disappear. So uh, I did this with uh, Balaraj Basi, and who lives in, I believe he lives, was living in Burnaby at the time. He's a Punjabi singer. And so he asked me to record this, and I uh, did it with him way back when, probably 15 years ago. I just decided to revive it. And this is the way it goes. It's in 12 beats, played quickly, so it sounds sort of six-ish. That was, I don't know, it was 12 beats too, but it was type of flow. So it comes in, it sounds up sounding like six, but it's played fast. Two, three, four, five, six.
So uh, those are uh, <clears throat> two different compositions in what could be called Mishra Malkons, whereas Malkons is the basic five-note scale, five-note minor scale, or, or five-pitch scale, and the um, the uh, other pitches are added in, but you still have to keep the feel of the uh, main pentatonic rod. So um, I think what we're going to do is go to guitar next. She is? Is she ready? Yeah, she's in back. Is she ready and in back and coming on stage? Yeah, and um, going dressed up and in the back. Okay. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now, but I think we're going to be here. Okay. I hear, I hear, I hear her knocking. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. We're going to do it. I just have to retune this little machine here. Is it it's the guitar? Yeah. It is the guitar. Oh, we have we have matching outfits today. Yeah, I, I decided to dress up. I'm not letting anybody else hear that, but <laughs> I'm decided to dress up. Perfect. <laughs> Interesting part of the show right here, listen to this. You'll have to wait for our next show to hear that again. <coughs>
We practiced that ending. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a, how some are we supposed to know it's over? <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Lara. That was amazing. And um, I have to let everybody know that she had a dirty chai before she got here. <clears throat> I wasn't supposed to say that, but she's wired. <laughs> dirty chai is one. What is a dirty chai? Chai has a lot of espresso in it. Espresso. Chai with espresso yeah. in it. <laughs> and I, I came up with the idea that why don't we do it the other way? Oh, Have an espresso chai, espresso coffee with a chai tea bag in it. They okay. can do it that way too. That would be my. Well, we could try both ways. And see <coughs> which one is the We're going to have a, like a Pepsi versus a Coke test on that one. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to do it. <laughs> well, thank you. So thank you. Um, yeah. We're going to have Bob see, next. See next. Stick, stick around. Hey, Bob Wilson is a uh, very talented uh, guitar player, and he's also one of my... I'm his co-worker at uh, Living Forest Campground, who's uh, the campground is uh, indirectly sponsoring this whole event. <laughs> they don't know about it, but they could be. Okay, I'm going to take a break and uh, let Bob take over. Can you hear me in this one? Yeah, that's probably good enough. I'm just gonna tune a little bit really quick before I play. Kim, I'm disconnecting this because I don't need it anymore. Yeah. So I'm going to play a little bit of uh, South American music and uh, a couple of my own compositions. And, uh, and then James is going to come back up and we're going to play a couple songs together. Yeah, I'll be back. He'll be back. And then uh, and, and that'll be it. So this first is a Brazilian uh, piece called Choros No. 1 by uh, Brazilian composer uh, Hector Villa-Lobos, who was the, the same composer who I started with last time. I've been playing this one since I was in university, and uh, it's one of my longtime favorites.
right, I'm going to move along with another piece from South America. Um, I believe it's an Argentinian composer um, named Jose Luis Merlin. And this is the first movement from the Suite del Recuerdo. It's called Evocation, and it's, uh, it's, I think it's one of the most beautiful uh, slow guitar pieces out there. So hope you enjoy it. Evocation, Evo I believe. longer than I intended it to be that time with all the restarts <clears throat> I'm gonna try a new piece that I just learned it's not new it's uh, I think it's actually from the year I was born 1985 um, by French composer Roland Dienz who I think passed away about two or three years ago um, and he wrote a, s a series of pieces that were uh, they were all entitled Something in Sky, and I believe it meant that it was supposed to be kind of the most cliche thing that he could write. So this is Tango in Sky, um, and it's, it's fairly new in my repertoire, but I really love it. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, here it is. Thank you. 
bit there still needs a little bit of work, but I really like the piece, so I wanted to try it. Okay, I'm going to tune down. Um, I'm going to play, this is the last thing I'm going to play. Uh, it's three pieces, though. And I hope I remember this because I wrote it. Um, nylon strings have a tendency to out of tune when you down to them, tune them. So, give it a second here. Um, so there's a bit of a story behind this piece. Um, uh, while my wife and I were trying to get pregnant uh, a few years ago, um, it had been quite a while, and at the time I'd actually been trying to write a tango, and uh, we were out on vacation, and it, the piece finally came together, but it wasn't a tango, it was a lullaby. Um, and uh, it turns out that the same weekend that I wrote the lullaby was the, the same weekend that our daughter was conceived. So it's kind of cool. Um, so I had a lullaby, and uh, I thought that I should write her some more music. So I wrote two more pieces and turned it into a suite. And it kind of goes along with the South American theme, being that the lullaby has a, a bit of a tango, um, like the habanera uh, rhythm in the bass line. And, uh, and the, uh, the last movement is a danza, which is based on um, another South American music that I really like. So. so this is the Lyra Suite. First movement's called uh, Lullaby, the second is Sleep, and the third one is Joy. Thank you. 
Thank you. Now uh, I'd like to invite James to come back up. Got time for, oh, okay. So we're going to do the uh, Spanish dance one? Yeah. Oh. Two? Yeah. Just kind of grab the music station. <coughs> I gotta retune for that though. <coughs> Whoops, that's not good. So we're gonna re have a piece called retuning. Do you want to introduce the piece? Hold on. Um, James came to me with this piece, um, which was funny because I just started working on it, um, learning it for a, a, a sight reading kind of challenge <coughs> with a, a friend of mine. And for me, it, I, I know it as the uh, just Pavana by Gaspar Sands from uh, he was a uh, from the sixteen mid mid sixteen hundreds. And, uh, and James had this Spanish dance piece that he wanted to play. I was looking at the sheet music and I was like, that looks really familiar. So I got, got out my, uh, my score and uh, made some changes to the way I play it so that it works. So James put a capo on so that we can <coughs> tune together. And, uh, and I, I think it's, it sounds pretty cool. So James is going to start us off. Yeah, we're gonna, uh, we got an arrangement that uh, just gives us each a chance to play the tune through in our own way and then we play it together. <coughs> Thank you. 
much. Thank you. I usually like to say that. that it's my trademark. That's the first time we ever played that. <laughs> I go through all my YouTubes and I feel like that's the first time we ever did that. We're not supposed to say that, but that's the first time we ever did that. And another time I actually did one. That's the first time we got it right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is actually. <laughs> cool. Thank you very Thanks. much. Tienes tú 